Right now, Mount Etna in Sicily is still erupting, but the story of the last 24 hours is not about lava racing toward towns. Lava has been flowing since January Rustram, and today the main flow is about 3.4 kilometers long, reaching down to roughly 1,960 meters above sea level inside the uninhabited Valle del Bove. Local authorities have extended the safety radius to 200 meters, stopped all night tours, and limited groups to 10 people while drones watch every move on the mountain. Professional guides have answered with a rare strike at the access points, and the way Etna is managed is now being tested in real time as officials try to balance science, tourism, and safety. In the last 24 hours, Mount Etna has stayed in eruption, but in a very controlled way. Lava has been flowing since January 1, and today the main lava flow is still inside the Valle del Bove on the eastern flank of the volcano. According to INGV and local authorities quoted by AP, the flow is about 3.4 kilometers long and reaches down to roughly 1,160 meters above sea level. The important detail is that the lava fronts at the bottom of the flow are now described as standing still and cooling down, not advancing towards any towns or villages. We also know that the source vent is an effusive vent at about 2,100 meters on the eastern slope, above the floor of the Valle del Bove. This entire valley is uninhabited and often described as a natural desert of old lava fields and cliffs. INGV simulations, repeated again in reports today, show that with the current low eruption rate, the lava is being kept inside this basin and is not expected to overflow into populated slopes. That is why, despite dramatic images of red lava at night, there are no official reports of homes threatened or communities under direct lava risk right now. At the same time, the way the eruption is managed has clearly shifted. The scientific message in the last 24 hours is simple and firm. The eruption continues, but it is stable, slow, and spatially confined. The real changes are in the rules on the ground and the conflict around those rules, which we will explain in the next part. In the last 24 hours, the main changes on Etna have come from the authorities, not from the lava. Local officials in Catania and in the towns around the volcano have issued stricter rules for anyone who wants to go near the active lava field. All guided excursions close to the flow are now limited to daylight hours. Night tours, which were very popular in past eruptions, have been suspended. After sunset, there is no legal way to reach the active sector, even with an experienced guide. The safety distance has also been fixed more clearly. According to rules quoted by AP, visitors must now stay at least 200 meters away from the active lava flow. Before this, the distance could change depending on conditions and on the judgment of each guide. Now the limit is written in a simple way and is easier to enforce. Group size is capped at 10 people. This rule already existed before, but local authorities are now checking it more strictly. Drones are being used to watch the slopes and to see in real time whether groups are respecting both distance and numbers. There are new practical limits on routes and altitude as well. At certain heights on Etna, Italian law already requires a certified volcano guide for any organized group. On top of that legal base, some of the usual routes have been closed or narrowed where they would bring people close to the fresh lava. In everyday terms, the combination of daytime-only access, a fixed 200-meter buffer, Smaller groups and partial route closures means that this eruption is being managed under very tight safety rules. These choices are now at the center of a direct conflict with local guides, which we will look at in the next part. As the new rules came into force, the first strong reaction did not come from tourists, but from the people who know Etna best on the ground, the professional guides. In the last 24 hours, AP Euronews, The Independent, and other outlets have all reported on a rare strike by Aetna's certified guides, described as the first movement of this kind in many decades. Instead of leading groups up the volcano, many of them have gathered at the main access points to the lava area, holding signs and speaking to cameras about what they see as unfair limits on their work. Their message is not that Aetna is harmless. Most of these guides have spent years walking the lava fields and working with scientists but they argue that the latest rules go beyond what the current level of risk requires. The ban on night tours removes some of the most requested experiences. The fixed 200-meter buffer, the stricter checks on group size, and the closure of several routes all reduce how close visitors can safely approach, even under expert supervision. 
In their view, this turns a controlled visit into something much more distant and less attractive, and it does so at exactly the moment when global media attention is high and local incomes depend on that demand. One key phrase from their public statements is that the new measures cancel their role and expertise. By this, they mean that decisions about where to walk, when to turn back, and how to manage a group are being moved from their trained judgment to a set of fixed distances and blanket bans decided in municipal offices. For the guides, this feels like a loss of professional trust. For officials, it is a way to make the rules clear and legally defensible if something goes wrong. Between those two positions stands the whole local economy that lives with Aetna and sells Aetna to the world. What makes this moment so sensitive is that it plays out in front of the cameras. Tourists see lava that is stable and far from towns. Guides say they can manage that situation safely. Authorities respond with tighter controls and drones in the sky. And in the middle, the question grows louder. Who should decide how close is close enough to an active volcano? In the next part, we will look at how Italy's main volcano institute, INGV, has tried to position itself inside this debate, and why one scientist's personal comments force the institute to clarify its official line. In the middle of this argument stands Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, INGV, the main scientific body that monitors Etna. In the last 24 hours, the president of INGV has issued a formal statement to separate the official position of the Institute from some personal comments made by one of its best-known volcanologists, Boris Benka. This clarification was needed because his earlier remarks about safety rules were widely quoted and then used in the public debate about whether the new restrictions are too strict or not strict enough. The new statement makes two key points. First, INGV says that it does not decide municipal safety rules. Local ordinances around Aetna are the result of a complex evaluation by the authorities who combine scientific data from INGV with terrain analysis, legal responsibilities, and the goal of protecting residents and visitors. Second, the Institute underlines that any public opinion expressed by individual researchers about those rules should be read as personal, not as the official voice of INGV as a whole. At the same time, regional media repeat that INGV continues to describe the current phase of the eruption as stable. The lava is effusive, the output rate is low, and the active flow is confined inside the Valle del Bove. On this scientific description, there is no dispute. Where opinions start to differ is in the translation from numbers and maps into fixed safety distances, closed paths, and bans on night tours. For viewers, this creates a clear picture of the roles on Aetna right now. INGV's job is to measure, analyze, and report. Local authorities must turn that information into rules that can be applied on the ground and defended in court. Guides must work inside those rules while trying to keep their business alive. When one scientist's personal comments are pulled into this triangle, the Institute will step in to protect its neutral role and to restate that public safety is the top priority. In the next part, we will look more closely at what the science actually says about this eruption, where the lava is, why it is considered stable for now, and what the realistic risk scenarios are if conditions change in the coming days. To understand why the rules on Aetna are so strict even when the lava is not moving toward towns, we need a clear picture of what the science actually says. Right now, the eruption is classed as effusive. The active vent is located at about 2,100 meters on the eastern flank, above the floor of the Valle del Bove. From this vent, the main lava flow runs for about 3.4 kilometers and reaches down to roughly 1,360 meters above sea level, still completely inside this large, uninhabited valley. The key observation in the last 24 hours is that the lava fronts at the lower end of the flow are standing still and cooling down. This means the leading edges are no longer advancing. The upper parts of the lava field are still active, with hot material moving over older crust. But the downhill progress has slowed so much that the front is effectively frozen in place for now. INGV models, repeated in today's reporting, indicate that with the present low effusion rate, the lava remains trapped inside the natural basin of the Valle del Bove and does not reach the outer slopes where people live. From a scientific point of view, this is why the current phase is described as stable. The eruption has been ongoing since January 1st, but the location of the vent, 
the shape of the valley and the modest output rate combine to keep the lava confined. There are no official warnings about lava threatening villages or towns, and no confirmed reports of homes in the path of the flow. Instead, the focus is on continuous monitoring, measuring how fast lava is being supplied, how far it extends, and whether any part of the flow changes behavior. The realistic risk scenarios depend on those basic parameters. If the effusion rate were to increase significantly, the lava could build up more volume and push further down within the Valle del Bove, still inside the same basin, but occupying more area. If the vent were to migrate to a different part of the flank, the geometry of the slope would change, and with it the possible pass. These are the kinds of changes that INGV watches for using ground instruments, maps, and satellite data. As long as the vent position, output rate, and valley confinement stay as they are now, the main scientific message remains. Etna is in eruption, but this particular lava flow is slow, confined, and not directly endangering settlements at this time. When people hear that an eruption is stable and that lava is confined, it can sound like the danger is over. On Etna, the last 24 hours show a different reality. Scientifically, the situation is controlled. The vent is fixed on the eastern flank. The lava flow is about 3.4 kilometers long. The front is standing still at around 1,360 meters in the Valle del Bove, and no homes are in its path. But the volcano is still erupting, and active lava fields always carry risks that can change faster than the news cycle. Even in an effusive eruption like this, several things can shift. A small increase in effusion rate can send more lava over the older crust and make the flow thicker and more mobile again inside the valley. New cracks or vents can open higher or lower on the flank, changing the slope and possible directions of flow. Local collapses on the edges of the lava channel can send blocks rolling downhill. Gas emissions, steam, and sudden changes in weather can reduce visibility and make it harder to move safely on the rough surface of recent lava. None of these scenarios automatically mean that towns are in danger, but they are enough to make close-range tourism a sensitive topic. That is why authorities prefer rules that are simple and strict rather than flexible and informal. A 200-meter buffer is easier to explain and to check than a moving safe distance decided moment by moment. A ban on night tours removes the added complications of darkness and fast-changing conditions after sunset. Limits on group size and route closures help emergency services if something unexpected happens. From the outside, this can look like an overreaction when images show slow, glowing lava in an empty valley. From a risk management point of view, it is a way to keep a stable eruption from turning into a search and rescue operation. For viewers, the important message is this. Stable on a volcano does not mean harmless. It means that scientists understand where the lava is, how it is moving, and what it is likely to do next, under current conditions. The safety rules on Etna are designed for the moments when those conditions suddenly change. In the next part, we will step back from Sicily and look at how this kind of situation compares with other active volcanoes, and what Etna's current eruption can teach us about living with persistent volcanic activity. Right now, Etna is showing us what it means to live with an active volcano in a modern country. The lava has been flowing since January 1. It is about 3.4 kilometers long, its front is standing still at around 1,360 meters, and it is completely confined inside the uninhabited Valle del Bove. There are no confirmed reports of homes in its path. From a scientific point of view, this phase is stable and well monitored. At the same time, the human story around the volcano is tense. Local authorities have moved to strict daytime access only, a fixed 200 meter buffer, small groups and partial route closures. Professional guides have responded with a rare strike, saying that these rules cut into their work and ignore their experience. INGV has stepped in to clarify its neutral role, repeating that its job is to provide data and analysis, not to decide local ordinances. The result is a very clear picture. Science, safety, and livelihoods are all meeting on the same slope of the same mountain. For us as viewers, the lesson is simple. A stable eruption is not background noise. It is a situation where we know where the lava is, where it is going, and what could change if the basic conditions shift. The strict rules on Etna are not based on panic. They are based on the idea that clear limits and careful monitoring prevent accidents when something unexpected happens. 
Even when the lava stays far from towns, every decision about access, distance, and group size matters for the people who work and live around the volcano. We will keep following Etna in the coming days. If new vents open, if the lava changes behavior, or if the rules on the mountain are adjusted again, we will bring you a clear update with both the scientific facts and the human impact. If this report helped you understand what is happening on Etna right now, please subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and share this video with someone who follows volcanic activity in Italy or elsewhere. Question for you in the comments. Where are you watching this eruption from? And do you think the current rules on Etna are too strict, too soft, or about right for an active lava flow like this?